feel good this morning like I do. you have great things in store for us. We know that you've already ordained our success. We know that, that you've already spoken the good for us. And Father, we take possession of it now by faith in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray over every household that is represented here today. Lord, we lift up pastor and first lady and their family, and their ministry, their calling on this life, and everything that is before him. Lord, we stand in agreement with him according to the will of God in the name of Jesus. And not only so, but every household represented here, Father. Lord God, we speak the will of God in our lives and our family members that are in other cities and towns and other places. Lord, we send prayer to them right now. In the name of Jesus, we decree that all is well for them. That is working together for their good in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we take authority over everything that is in these premises here today in the name of Jesus. We choose not to have a, a lofty mind in the name of Jesus. We choose to bring down those things that do not exalt the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lord God, we bind the very spirit of suicide. Anything that is contrary to sound doctrine, Lord, we bind it up right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For we are a blessed people. Say that with me. We are a blessed people. We are an anointed people. We, we are a chosen people. Hallelujah. We are a royal priesthood. In the name of Jesus. Say it with me. You know what I'm going to say. That 2022 is the greatest year of our lives so far. In the name of Jesus, Father, we speak it in pain. Lord, we stand on your word. We receive it now and we count it done. In Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen.
Genesis and guests. I would like to first give glory to God and then honor to our pastor, First Lady LaSher, and our guest pastor, Bowman. I feel privileged and welcome, feel privileged to welcome you all on this day. It's a special day each year, but this year we are grateful to be able to celebrate this occasion in our new sanctuary. Amen. We look back and praise God for what we have achieved as a church these last seven years. We thank him for his grace and his mercy. As a church, we are blessed because of the goodness of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. He has given us the opportunity to be called his sons and daughters. Amen. As we celebrate this day, we want to thank the Lord for what he has done. And we are only counting his blessings in our lives. Thank you very much to all of you who have found time to come and celebrate with us. We feel humble for your kind act. Thank you and what thank you and welcome as we enjoy together. I just want to give a little speech on my experience here in New Genesis. I've been in church my entire life, and I knew church for a long time. I'm 25 years old, but I did not know God. I went to a church, and we had four hours of service. We would leave church. Our heart was still the same. Nobody was convicted by the word. We just going to church to say we went to church. It's Sunday morning. I went to church. That's what I'm supposed to do. And, you know, we stay in places that God tell you to leave. And it took church hurt for me to leave because that was my family church. I felt at home there. You know, that's where I knew everybody. And we can all fill in the blanks of the reasons why we hold on to things that God is telling us to move from. Amen. But for me, it took church hurt to let go. And sometimes you got to thank God for your Judas's because without Judas, the promise would have never came. It would have never been that thing. Jesus' betrayal led to the forgiveness of our sins. That betrayal led me to grow closer to God and have a true relationship with God and with Jesus. Yeah. And I'm anxious to get to church now and hear the word, and I'm excited to know what the choir is going to sing today and what Nugget Pastor is going to bless my life with. Amen. And um, I just wanted to drop a few um, sermons that the pastor has blessed me with that I use in my everyday life. Because I don't know about you, but I've definitely been from the pit to the palace when we lost everything in the house party. Yeah. Yeah. But God told us that his, that our setback was God set up for your comeback. Amen. And when you're going through your situations and things going bad, you got to say, I need a little more of God in times like this. Yeah. And we just last week, we also learned that sometimes you got to look at what God promised you and tell the devil, hey, let me get that up off you. <laughs> because that's what God promised me. And you can't have it. And these are just a few sermons that changed my life in New G, and I look forward to many more. Like, to know these people, like, 
like basically my whole life. I remember um, as a child growing up in the CME church when first lady would come and pick me up for choir rehearsal, she would come pick me up from church. It's never a moment that even with um, Reverend Shore, if I can call him anytime, any any time of day or night, and I just love him. But i um, today when I was asked to do remarks, I'm reminded of about three years ago. I wasn't in church. I mean, I grew up in church, but straight away, and I was churched out. I was tired of church people. I was tired of you know all this. I was trying to get back out of the world. But then one one Sunday morning, I woke up. And I said, I need a word today. I need a word from God. And I, the church that me and my kids had moved off to Jackson, Mississippi for a free, few years. When we came back, we joined the church that was close to home. We were baptized together. So I had been to the church in a minute, but I woke up and I was like, well, we're going to go. I got my kids ready. We drove to Ashland and I pulled up in the parking lot and nobody was there. I didn't know that it was a power outage that morning. And I was like, but I need a word. I'm searching for something. <sighs> Y'all, I'm thug. Thugs ain't supposed to cry. <laughs> Thugging out here, I ain't supposed to cry. But no, seriously, I called. And first, first person that popped up in my mind was Reverend Short. I called him. He was in the middle of something school. I was like, "Hey, y'all got church today?" He was whispering. I was like, "I said, what time service start?" He said. 10, I said, okay, well, I'm coming. I left Ashland, Mississippi, and I drove here. And when we left, that the service was awesome. When we left that day, my oldest son said, Mama, can we start coming here? Because this feels like home. Yeah. A couple of months later, we joined the church, and we've been here since. And it's about three years ago. I'm so honored to be a part of New Jeep. Amen. It's Amen. definitely changed my life. Thank you. My kids, like, I have my mom coming now. My granny, my 18 year old granny, she's making sure Saturday morning, Saturday night. You go to church, you stop out here and get me. So Amen. she's coming with me, too. And we're just so thankful to be part of New Jeep. church a couple times and uh, he needed some musicians he said uh, what you gonna charge me and I said man I didn't charge you nothing you remember, you remember that pastor <laughs> and, 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 and the reason why because what he didn't understand I was already really praying for you have a text message from Shantaris here's the message for God to I was already praying for God to put me in a place just to elevate my spiritual man. And it so happened that God connected us together. So that's that's one of the reasons why we're here uh, on this day. Uh, the other reason was because uh, in, in our prayers, me and my wife's prayers, we wanted to make sure that this the pastor lined it up with was the biblical standards of yeah. what a pastor should be. And a lot of times, what, what happened was I began to search the scripture, and he was everything that God had called a pastor to be. Yeah. 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 Acts, Acts 29 said, a pastor must be devoted to his wife. Yeah. Come on, say amen. 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 A pastor must love his wife exclusively with his mind, yeah. with his will and emotion, and not just his body. Amen. A pastor. See, see, see. Some of y'all join churches, but y'all don't understand the qualifications of a pastor. All right, yeah. say that. The Bible says a pastor is a faithful steward. Yeah. See, I'm gonna step on somebody's toes right now. <laughs> the term is used in the Greek, 
Espicopus, I can't pronounce that word, but it is, it is another office but a functional title for an elder. A pastor must be humble and not arrogant. Yes. That's our pastor, right? Yes. A pastor must be gentle and not quick tempered. That's our pastor. Yes. A pastor must be sober and not drunken. That's our pastor. Yes. A pastor must have financial integrity. Come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. There's some pastors I've seen that go get, they'll get all the money they can out of the church. Yeah. Don't want to work, don't want to help nobody, want everybody to serve him. Yeah. But our pastor literally served the church. Yeah. That's the pastor. Come on, say amen, somebody. Yeah. A pastor must, must be a lover of good. Amen. Amen. A pastor must be holy. That's our pastor. A pastor must be able to teach sound doctrine. Come on, say amen, somebody. Our pastor teaches sound doctrine. A pastor must be respectable. And I see him be walking in respect between everybody with respect all the time. That's our pastor. Now watch this. And I'm going to get ready to get to sit down. So the reason why he is so great to be able to function as a pastor because he have a strong wife. Amen. Come on, say amen. I'm going to tell, tell you something. You can be the man he's called to be without his wife. Come on, say amen. And all the blessings that flow on him is because she's connected with the favor of the Lord on her life. So Proverbs tells us, he who finds a wife, what is good, and receives favor from the Lord. That's why he got so much favor. See, when you were going through the valley, God was already stretching out favor because of your wife. And not only that, the Bible says, a wise woman fills her heart.
can hear yes, the comfort that they bring. Oh, yeah. Those are lyrics from a well-known gospel singer by the name of James Cleveland. And it's called, Give Me My Flowers. Now, of course, he's not talking about little flowers that we go and pick out of the, off of a bush or off of the ground. But he's talking about what I like to call lavishing love upon others. Okay? That can be in word and it can be in deed. Um, supporting someone that we love. Being there. Sometimes it's just being there. It's not always necessarily words. Sometimes just being there. Sometimes it's gifts. An encouraging word. We need to do that more with our leaders. Amen. They're always there for us. Amen. I mean, you can say you picked up your phone and called him or her on, on countless times Amen. for prayer, for encouragement. We need to do that more with our leaders. I've been asked to give flowers to Pastor Sharon and Cheryl this morning. Amen. 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 She has her. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so when I think of her, when I was asked to do this, and I begin to just think of her, I said, she is beautiful. Amen. Amen. She is beautiful. Amen. She is beautiful. Amen. That's all I can think of. Though. That's the word that came. She's beautiful. She's beautiful. If you don't know her, she's not only beautiful outside, but she's more beautiful inside. Yeah. 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 to sit with her or talk with her or spend any time with her, she's beautiful. Amen. And so today, I want to talk to you about that beauty that we have within our midst. Mm -hmm. B is for blessed. She's blessed. She's empowered to prosper. All right. She's blessed. Right. Hey. E is for encouraging. She's always giving an encouraging word. She's always giving support. Um, I can remember on one occasion, this was years ago, and we would come and visit the ministry. We had not yet given a commitment. And I, we saw her, my family and I were at the grocery store. And we saw her, she remembers this, we saw her at the grocery store. And we had not been in a couple of Sundays. And she came over and she spoke. But she also said, we miss you. And I don't know if we came the next Sunday, but maybe the next, but soon after we came back. Because that let me know that she missed me. Yeah. My presence she missed. All right, now. That means a lot. Yes. That's that encouraging word. She's also A. We're on A. She's anointed. Amen. Has anyone heard this woman pray? Yeah. She's also awesome. yeah. She's anointed. She's empowered to do all that God has called her to do. You is for unafraid. She's unafraid. The word of God says in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. She is unafraid. T is for thoughtful. She is thoughtful. Personally, me and my family suffered from COVID on last year. This woman called us every day, not only her, but also pastor, to check on us. She didn't have to do that. Amen. Sometimes it would be more than once a day. I appreciated that. Yeah. That, meant, that meant so much to me. Yeah. Not only did she call, she made sure we had food, cleaning supplies, right. whatever. She had a daughter, Lord, who you? Lord, to drop things off at the door. That's thoughtful. Yeah. She's also, I, She's intelligent. This is a smart woman. Okay. She's bright and she's informed. She's intelligent. She's also F, stands for a woman of faith. She trusts and has confidence in God. Amen. You, she's uncommon. And L, why that she's lovely. She is enjoyable to be around. Right she is nice. And she is full of love. So y'all, let's celebrate this beautiful woman of God. Not just today, but every day. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We love you, Pastor yeah. Shane.
give you your flowers today. church said amen. amen. Everybody that love God, come on, some of y'all sit still. I don't like that. Everybody that love it, come on, clap your hands up. Don't do it for me. But do it because he did good to you. Some of y'all still sitting down. I said, don't even do it for your own self. But his family in this room can clap your hands real fast. My God has been good to you. In spite of you, in spite of your ups and your downs, your crazy turnaround, your family and your daughter. I want y'all to touch somebody real quick and just tell them he's been good to me. Y'all touching the wrong folks because if they didn't get a boost off, you need to find somebody else. And tell that out of all I've been through, out of all I've been through, somebody waves at me. I'll be back at your door and say you've been good to me. Y'all sit up. Y'all sit up. Look back over my life, and I see what He's done for me. I, 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 I can't help myself. I gotta tell somebody He's been good to me. I could have been, would have been, should have been dead. But by the grace, by the grace, by the grace of the Lord, I come a long way. Is that anybody here? Y'all sit down, y'all. Please sit down. Sit down. Come on, one more time. If he's been good to you. If he's been real good, if that person next to you is sit down, pull them up out of that chair, touch them out of the hand, shake them real good. Shake them real good. Don't shake it like a dead fish. Shake them like you're going to shake it off. It's a game. Be not this man. Whatever this man is. Whatever they tell you, should God will, should God will, should God will take care of you. What we do, I said what we will, I said what we will, I said what we will. If you know he will, let me hear you shout yeah. Y'all sit down, y'all sit down. Y'all sit down, please. Y'all sit down, y'all sit down, y'all sit down. Y'all sit down, y'all sit down, y'all sit down. Oh! 
clap your hands, let's give him praise all over the room. Come on, we can do better than that. Clap your hands, let's give him praise all over the room. That sounds like three people. I said, clap your hands, let's give him praise. Come on, if the Lord has been good to you, he's made a way for you. I need you to clap your hands, open up your mouth, and let's praise our God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity to come together in your name. And now, Father, it's preaching time, and we need to hear, hallelujah, a word from you. Father, now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray that you would hide me behind the cross, that, Father, hallelujah, that they will not see me, but my prayer tonight is the Lord today let them see you. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, please, Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, you are my strength. And I thank you today for being my redeemer. It is in the wonderful name of Jesus, the Christ, we do pray in Jesus' name. And amen. One more time, clap your hands, give it praise all over the room. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Certainly we do give honor to the Spirit of Christ in which we feel in this place to Jesus who is the head of the church. And I pray and hope that he is the head of all of our lives. Thank you. We thank God for Jesus today and what he has done for us over 2,000 years ago on a hill called Calvary. And um, I know that this, amen, it's pastoral anniversary, church anniversary. But let me just see the hands of you that are still grateful for Calvary. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God for Calvary. Thank God for the cross. And thank God for Jesus today. Amen. For it is because of him that we live and we move and we have our, make, our being. Can you do me a favor? Look at somebody and tell them, I thank God for Jesus. I thank I thank No, you ain't found the right name. But look at somebody else and tell them, I thank God for Jesus. I just need to see where my Jesus love is at. Where my Jesus, where, where my Jesus. Come on, there's a lot of us in here. I just need to see where my Jesus love is at. Hallelujah. All right, amen, amen. If you don't mind, I need everybody that's got two legs. I need you to stand and help me bless the Lord for the wonderful leaders of this house. Come on, come on, come on, let's give God praise. For the wonderful leaders, amen, Captain Ashura, amen, and to the fragrance of this house, his lovely wife. Come on, give God praise for them. Hallelujah. We certainly do give God praise for them, and we are grateful for the leadership, amen, that they are providing to the Olive Branch community. Amen, amen, amen. Let me just say, let me just say this. New Genesis, y'all are blessed. I said, you all are blessed, uh, blessed people. He says, I have called uh, pastors after my own heart. And, um, you know, some churches don't have pastors. They just got preachers. And there is a distinctive difference between a preacher and a pastor. Uh, but, 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 and you can tell how much a how much the Lord loves you by who he sends to lead you. And, and certainly uh, today you are blessed because you have this wonderful opportunity to sit at the feet of this wonderful man and woman of God. One more time, clap your hands for them. Amen. I, am, I am grateful to them. Amen. They have been nothing but kind to me. Amen. Since we first encountered each other and um, they have been nothing but kind to me. Um, your pastor is very hospitable. Yeah. Uh, he is very hospitable. Very hospitable. And um, I want to share this. I want to tell you how good y'all pastor is. Um, um, he asked me, he said, uh, uh, he said, I'm going to fly you here or whatever. I said, okay, good. That'd be great. And uh, I told him, I said, you know, this I just like, I prefer to sit by the window, uh, window seats, and put me in the emergency exit, because I'm a big guy, <laughs> amen, and so I need a little bit more room, and he said, oh, no, man, we put you first class, <laughs> you come to preach for me, you're going to come first class, 
And so, and so we are grateful. Amen. Um, he made sure that we ate. He took good care of us, showed us around. And we are grateful. Amen. For who he is to the body of Christ. Amen. 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 I just want to say to you, amen, Pastor and First Lady, we pray the blessings of the Lord upon you. But we do know that the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no, no, no sorrow. To all of the ministers of this house, amen, thank you so much for what you do for the body of Christ. To the leaders of this house, God bless you today. Uh, we do honor you. Uh, to the wonderful New Genesis Church, amen. Amen. God bless you. Glad to see all of you today. Um, if you don't mind, look over at look over at somebody and tell them I'm glad to see you today. I'm glad, I'm glad to see you. I'm glad, I'm glad I'm seeing you and not viewing you. Amen. I'm glad I'm seeing you and not, and not viewing and not viewing you. I am elated to have uh, my minister of music with us today. Amen. He always goes everywhere I go. Amen. He takes time out of his busy schedule to join us. I, I'm glad that he said, can y'all clap it up for him? Amen. Amen. Let's go. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. And to my surprise, amen, some of the sweet, sweet saints of the New Life Fellowship Church thought it not a robbery to drive 10 hours. Come on, Joe. Come on. That's sweet money. Come on. 10 hours. Amen. 10 hours. Oh, the Lord is here to <laughs> to be with us today and I'm grateful I appreciate y'all so much it means a lot amen, amen to have people support you because you know people don't have to be nice to you do y'all hear what I said? I said people don't have to be nice to you they don't have to support you and so we're grateful amen so much uh, for you being here and sharing um, with us today I'm, I'm not going to worry you long I'm not plan to worry you long um but let's go into the word of God. 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 uh, Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16. Amen. For the basis of our discussion, I want to lift up uh, verse 10 through 13. I'm going to ask if you don't mind, please stand for the reading of God's word. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 10. Through 13. Bro, George, is that E? Song says, I can't give up. Now, y'all requested this. I can't give up now. Hallelujah. You see, I come. I got a 
look at somebody else and tell them something good is getting ready to happen. I already see it in your future. I see your future looks better than your past. I said, I see y'all ain't want to have church in the time of life. I said, I see your future looks better than your past. Let me try y'all in the middle. I said, I see your future looks better than your past. And look at somebody doing something good. Oh, yeah. 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 What you've been praying for, I came to tell you, it's already done. I said, what you've been asking God for, I came to tell you, it's already done. What you've been seeking God for, I came to tell you. Matter of fact, do me a favor. Find you about three more people and tell them I got a feeling that everything will be all right. said to him the Lord has not chosen these so he asked Jesse are these all the sons you have there is still the youngest Jesse answered he is tending the sheep Samuel said send for him we will not sit down until he arrives Verse 12, so he sent for him and had him brought in. The Bible said he was glowing with health, and had fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise, let the whole church say rise, and anoint him for this is the one. I look at somebody and tell them I am the one. I am. <laughs> Verse 13 says, So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Rehab. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The grass withers, the flower fades. But certainly it is the word of our God which shall, which shall stand forever. I want to preach for a few moments of your time from the subject, I'm anointed for this. Look at somebody and tell them I'm anointed for this. I'm, no, you ain't found the right name, but look at somebody else and tell them I'm anointed for this. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. I'm anointed, I'm anointed for this. I do want to start this dialogue off by saying and suggesting to you, ladies and gentlemen, that there is a very distinctive difference between being gifted and anointed. Somehow, in some way, this new generation church have confused gifted people with anointed people. The word gifted simply means to have great natural ability. 
or, or in other words, just just to be talented is it means you 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 just you just got it. You yeah. it, it's it's in your DNA. Yeah. You, uh -huh. you 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 got it. It, it. Your mama had it. Your daddy had it. Your your sister had it. Your brother had it. Everybody in your family knows how to do what you are gifted to do. You've got a talent. You are a very gifted. Matter of fact, James chapter 1 verse 17 says every good uh, gift and every perfect gift comes from above. First Peter chapter 4 verse 10 says in there, and every man have received the gift even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God in essence any and everybody can have a gift but the problem is when we misconstrue gifted people with anointed people and the reality is ladies and gentlemen there are so many gifted people in church that have the charisma and have it so good that we feel like their gift makes them anointed um, because you got you got gifted preachers but they're not anointed you you've got gifted choir members but they're not anointed you got gifted deacons to pray but they're not anointed but I want you to do me a favor look at somebody and tell them we need the anointing we don't just need your gift, but we need the anointing because it is the anointing that destroys the yokes. I wonder if there's anybody in the room that can testify. I just don't want the gift, but Lord, give me the anointing. I, I want that every time I stand up that the atmosphere changes. I want that every time I come in a place that people will leave change because of the anointing on my life. Look at somebody and tell them for me, we need the anointing. We need, we need the anointing. We we need the anointing. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I came to suggest to you today, don't allow your gift to fool you. Don't, don't allow your gift to fool you because you can be so gifted that you can climb the range and, and come all the way down to the bottom. But people will never be moved because there is no anointing behind your singing. You can pray and you can get all loud in the microphone, but people will not be changed because there is no anointing in your praying. You can preach and holler and scream and people will never change. They'll come in on an emotional roller coaster and still leave the same way because they have been boosted up by your your gift and not the anointed. But I just need to see the witnesses in the room that can testify if I've been functioning out of my gift. I'm pushing my gift to the side and my prayer is Lord send me the anointed. I just wish I had anointed folk in the room that can testify every time I get up I'm getting up praising God and I'm going to let the anointing do the work. Uh, one more time, I know you're probably tired of talking to him, but look at that neighbor. Scram the face and look at him and tell him we need the anointing. Yeah. <laughs> we need the anointing. Uh, and those of you that are Bible readers, you will discover, ladies and gentlemen, that this chapter opens up with God reminding Samuel. He's reminding Samuel of the fact, uh, yes, uh, that Saul has been rejected. Uh, Saul was chosen as a king over Israel because the people, listen to me well, it was the people that wanted a king. The people wanted to be like other nations. They had the king of kings. They had the supreme ruler. They had the one ruling them. But they despised, desired to be by a physical man. Notice, if you will, that it wasn't that God wasn't doing a good job, but they wanted it so bad that they just wanted to 
be like somebody else. I came to preach to about 10 of y'all today and tell you in this room, stop wasting your time trying to be like everybody else. You can't even be you because you're trying to be like everybody else. You're trying to sing like everybody else. You're trying to shout like everybody else. You're trying to preach like everybody else. You're trying to pray like everybody else. You buying hair like everybody else. You ain't makeup and lashes like everybody else. But what God is saying, he said, I want to do something new in you. I want you to bother that neighbor. I tell them God want to do something new in you. God is trying to make you a trendsetter. He's trying to make you the one that's going to lead by example. Lift your little hands and say, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, Lord, don't do it. And so, and so the, Bible, the Bible declares that the, the nation of Israel wanted to be like everybody else. They, they decided to be like every, everybody else. They wanted a physical king. They wanted a physical king. And let me just give you this nugget and I'm moving. Be careful with people that are driven by their flesh and not driven by the Father. Let me try it again. I said be careful with people that are driven by their flesh and not driven by their father. Can I suggest to you ladies and gentlemen sometimes you got to put your own selfish desires to the side. Some stuff ain't worth fussing about. Some stuff ain't worth having an argument about. Some Y'all ain't hearing me preach. I said some stuff just ain't worth it. Because somebody tell me it just ain't worth it. It just ain't. Because I'm not trying to please you anyway. I'm just trying to. I wish I had about 10 people in this room that can wave your hands and say, Preacher, that's my testimony. I ain't trying to please nobody. I ain't trying to make nobody happy. I'm just trying to make God happy. I'm just trying to please. I wish I had some witnesses in the room that can give God your best praise. That in the next season of your life, you ain't trying to please your neighbor. You ain't trying to please your friend. You ain't trying to please nobody. All you trying to do is please. says when Saul was chosen uh-huh. to be the king the people were elated the people were ecstatic they got what they wanted uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I said the people were elated mm-hmm. the people were ecstatic mm-hmm. because they got what they wanted yeah. Oh, yeah. can I just tell you this sometimes what you want ain't what you need yeah. <laughs> I'm talking to the single folk in the room. Sometimes you're trying to be with that man and that woman so bad. You're trying to do everything you can because you want it. But the reality is what you want is really not what you need. I'm talking to the people in the room that's trying to start a business. And you're trying to open up a business. You want this building so bad. But God says you want that building and I got something better for you. I'm talking to the people in the room that's trying to go somewhere in God. And you're just trying to settle with sitting at the back being cute, calm, and collected. And God said, no, baby. I'm trying to get you out the back. I'm trying to pull you to the front. Look at somebody and say, all I want is what God wants. All I want is give me what. The people were ecstatic. They they were excited. They were they were full of joy because they got what they wanted. And I heard your pastor say yesterday while we were sitting in the car, he says sometimes the grass is not always greener on the other side. Can I help y'all? Y'all trying to get stuff that people want, that people got, that they don't even want no more. I'm trying to figure out why you trying to get something that somebody got that they don't even want. That's 
why you shouldn't be trying to be jealous of nobody because you don't know what they went through to get what they got I want to see if I got anybody in the room that can help me preach in Island Branch, Mississippi and testify everything God gives me I want I said stop dealing with rejected people. You trying to approve who God's already rejected. You trying to put your hand on people that God had already took his hands off of. And so what Paul, what Saul has done is Saul has now moved out of the will of God. That's what I said. I gotta raise up somebody else. Can I tell you, be not dismayed yes. because nobody noticed you now. Because some of us are in the grooming room. He's preparing you for the palace in the pasture. Yes. Tell somebody you got to go through the process. Three things I see in the text, and I'm done with y'all. Three things I see in the text that I must share with you tonight. I mean, today, and I'm done. The first thing I want to share with you is this God's choice, or who God anoints, His choice is sovereign. Let the whole church say sovereign. That, that word sovereign means one possessing or hail to possess supreme power or sovereignty. In essence, as it relates to God, simply means God has the ultimate power to do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. That despite the choices and the desires of the people, God's 
choice reigns supreme. In essence, God was going to do what he wanted to do simply because God was still in charge. Yes, look at somebody and tell them God is still in charge. Yes, Israel had a king king they wanted but he allowed rebellion and rejection to invade his heart and God says enough is enough God brings the process of choosing a new king for Israel he developed the right strategy though, though he is sovereign he understands that success is built on the back of strategy. In essence, you cannot be successful if you don't got a plan. I need you to look at somebody and tell them you got to have a strategy. But the Bible says he raised up Samuel. And when he raises up Samuel, he says, I need you to go down to anoint the next king. It was a strategic plan. It was a plan that was well thrown out. Y'all got time for me to tell you? If you look back at the ancestry of King David, one of David's ancestors was a woman by the name of Rahab. That's found in Judges chapter 2. She had been saved, hallelujah, out of her pagan and idolatry ways and brought to this nation called Israel. She then married a man by the name of Simon according to Matthew chapter 1 verse number 5 and became the mother of a man named Boaz. That's Ruth chapter 4 verse number 20. Boaz married a Gentile girl brought her out of paganism by the sovereign grace of God and the woman name was Ruth and you remember Ruth don't you? Ruth and Boaz were the great grandparents of David in essence what I'm trying to tell you is that these events were not accidental they were part of a perfect plan and I came to tell somebody what God is doing in your life is no accident what God is doing in your life is no coincidence what God is doing in your life it comes with a strategy I need you to look at somebody and tell them I'm not an accident I'm not an accident no you ain't found the right neighbor I said I'm not an accident that's why your mama couldn't abort you because you're not an accident that's why your mama couldn't get rid of you come on because you're not an accident I need you to look at somebody and tell them I'm not an accident but I'm here by divine assignment and I believe that God got me here for a reason and it is he's sovereign but he knows that success is built on the back of strategy tell somebody you gotta have a plan have a plan but then secondly, that's for sure, not only is God sovereign, God's choice is sovereign, but God's choice is specific. Yes. God had a specific plan in mind. He specifically chose Samuel. Out of all the prophets in the world, he chose Samuel. He sent Samuel to a specific town called Bethlehem. And those of you that know anything about the Bible, if you've been to Sunday school or Bible study anytime, you know that Bethlehem was the place of our Savior's birth. He, he, he sent him to a specific town called Bethlehem. He then sends him to a specific family in that town. Not in the old family, but a blessed family. Matter of fact, I just need you to prophesy that in your in, in prophesy that where you are right now and say my family is blessed. Mm. Oh, no, no. I want you to prophesy that thing. I want the devil to hear you. I want them to hear you all the way down the road and say, My family is blessed. My, my everybody connected to me is blessed. I'm blessed. My family blessed. Mama, daddy, sister, brother blessed. Grandma, granddaddy, come on, children. They are blessed. Everybody connected to me is blessed. I don't care who they are. If they got a connection with me, Particular family. He sent them to a blessed family. He sent them to a prosperous.
prosperous family. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm moving, but I want you to release this in the atmosphere. My family going to prosper. My family going to prosper. I will no longer. Hallelujah. I will no longer be the beggar. I got to help you. I said, I'll no longer be the beggar. I ain't going to rob Peter and Paul. Come on. So that I can pay Silas. Come on here. But I, I, I'm going to move. God is getting ready to turn the table. Because I am a prosperous family. Everything that I need, God's getting ready to preside it for me. And he's going to give me more than I ask for. Matter of fact, I need you to look at somebody and tell them I'm living in the overflow. I'm living in the overflow. No, baby, I ain't just got enough. I got more than enough. I got more than I ever need. I'm a blessed. But, 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 but something was wrong in his character. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 
that disqualified him from being the king, come on, of Israel. The, the, the next, matter of fact, do me a favor, look at somebody and tell them, check your character. Check, check, check your character. Yet the next son comes by, but when he, when he passes by, he passes by and the Lord rejects him too. One, one after another of Jesse's sons passed by the old prophet by the name of Samuel until seven have passed by and, and, and all are rejected by the Lord. And so we, we shout, Brother George and Pastor Bashur, catch this word in the spirit. We talked about it yesterday. We shout over number seven. We, we shout over the number seven. And then yesterday, let me just get you up to speed. Pastor said, what room do you want? I said, give me the seven. But George says, give me the eight. And if I would have been thinking correctly, I would have took eight over seven. Because we shout over seven. Because seven means completion. But you miss your shout when you didn't shout over number eight. Because eight is a new beginning. to tell somebody that God is getting ready to start over new with you. I need somebody in the room that can testify it's my season of a new beginning. I'm moving out of here, but I must tell y'all today that this son, he is called to walk by your Samuel. The Bible says, surely these men have great specimens, have their specimens, and their bodies have been refined, and their bodies have been toned by hours of hard work and physical labor. But none of them possess the right kind of character traits. God sees what man cannot see. Because man looks on the outward appearance. Yeah, I feel my help here, but what God looks at the heart. Look at somebody and tell them God is looking at your heart. I said God is looking at your heart. These boys pass before Samuel. And the Bible says that God rejects them. Samuel finds out that there is another son. Yes, he is the youngest son. And he is said to be out with the sheep. Isn't it so significant, ladies and gentlemen, that this boy was not called in with everybody else? Yeah, isn't it so significant? Yeah, yeah, that this boy was left out in the pasture. And, uh, and that when they called yes for this little boy the bible says notice they never called him by his name the bible says he says i got one more son and he is the youngest look at somebody and say he's the youngest and what i'm really trying to tell somebody is that in this season you ain't even got to know my name all you got to do is know my ability i said look at somebody and tell them and you ain't got to know my name i just want you to know what i'm able to do and i'm able to do all things through crying that strengthen me do i have can y'all do me a favor and look at somebody and tell them I might be the least I might be the one but that you did not expect but I got good news good news for you and the good news is I'm who God wants I lay hand on yourself and tell yourself I'm who God wants 
want I may not be who you want But I'm who God wants Yeah In the one That God Is getting ready to you And God Told Samuel He said Samuel Look at this little boy He's a young man He's bright eyed He got blush on his cheeks He's good to look at But he's got a heart of the mind And I came to tell you This is the season When you ain't gotta look good But you gotta have God's heart Lift your little hand I said Lord give me your heart Give me your heart He said when Samuel when Samuel saw the boy God said to Samuel he said get up and anoint him for this is the one and that's what I came to tell you I am the one look at somebody and tell them I am the one I am the one that they looked over I am the one people frowned up at I am the one that they said I never make it I am the one that they said I never amount to anything but look at somebody and tell them name God for getting ready to make the devil out of a lion is there anybody in the room that can testify I'm the one, he's gonna use for his glory. I listen y'all, it might not be my time, but my time is coming. Find one more person, and I'm out of here. But look at somebody, I've got a name, it's my time. But not only my time, but it's my turn. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to walk in my blessing. Is there anybody in this room that can testify the reason I am where I am? Because I'm anointed. I'm anointed to do what I do. I'm anointed to have what I have. I'm anointed to walk my to lay hands on the sheep and they will recover. Grab you a neighbor. Do me a favor. Grab you a neighbor. Shake that neighbor. Some of y'all ain't doing that. Shake that neighbor. Look at how y'all look at that. Shake that neighbor. And rock that neighbor. I know COVID is out there. But thank God for sanitizer. And rock that name. Say, come on. Like God. It's good to you. Say that name. Like God. I'll pay your life here. Say that name. Like God. I put gas in your car. Say that name. Like God. It's getting ready to drop a check in your mailbox. Shake that name. Rock that name. Shake a rock. Rock them and shake them. I tell them, baby, get ready. But I am the one. I'm the one. That God is getting ready. To use for his glory. Shake that name. Rock 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 that name. You can't die because you're dripping in oil. The oil of the Lord is upon you. There's favor on your life. There's favor. I need you to do me a favor. Find three people. I tell them I got favor. I got favor. I got favor. I got favor. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. 
got joy. God, I wish I had a trip here. I said, no matter what I'm going through, I still got joy. Look at somebody and tell them I still got it. Still got joy. Still got joy. After all the things that I've been through, still got joy.
the Lord told me to tell you, elevation is about to hit your house. As you walk, the Lord is moving. As you walk forward, the Lord is moving. Come on, as, come on, come on. as you walk forward, I just be I need somebody in the room that can give God praise to have He's walking. Get ready to do it for your whole family. 
It's your time and your turn. First lady, I just want you to lay hands on her chest right now. Hallelujah. I need somebody to go up and praise for her family. I need some, if you connected to her, I just need you to go up and praise for her family, right? Hallelujah. 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 some requests that you have before him because you've been faithful. He said, not only have you been faithful to your family, you've been faithful to this ministry. I don't even know you, but he said, he said you've been faithful to this ministry and the Lord's going to reward you for your faithfulness. I just want somebody to point at her and tell her it's her time and your turn. I gotta move, but I feel a prophetic wind. Oh, yeah. oh, Young lady, you. Ready? Yeah, can you lift your hands? Thank you, God bless you. The Lord says that He's getting ready to present you with an opportunity. Hear me well you with an opportunity to record. He says before, before it can be successful, these are exact words I hear first lady, before it can be successful, it, you must first come up with a strategy. You gotta get a plan. And the Lord says that he's also going to give you endorsements. Yeah, Lord. Matter of fact, matter of fact, I don't even know you, but I hear the Lord. I'm going to give you the first hundred dollars to endorse your vision. I said, God's getting ready to endorse. First lady, give me for a second. I said, God's getting ready to endorse your vision. I want you to lay hands on her stomach. And out of your belly shall flow rivers. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Out of your belly. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. It's your season. It's your season. I said, it's your season. It's your season. I wish I had a book that'll give God praise on the room. I need you to praise them like that was your sister. Like that was your mama. Come on. I need you to open up your mouth and praise them. Come on. 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 Hallelujah. Lord, the Lord told me to tell every last one of y'all 
that the struggle is over. Give me last one of you. The Lord said the struggle is over. And, and specifically for you, I'm coming to Albany, but specifically for you, you have a desire to go to school. You have a desire to go to school. The Lord said this is the season that you're living under the open heaven. He says he's getting ready to open up a door. Hallelujah. The Lord says and he's going to fund your school. What didn't happen for other people? Hi. Now, do you do like hair or something? Do you do cos cosmetology or anything like that? I'm a nurse. You're a nurse. Okay, listen, this is what I hear. The Lord says to me to tell you that you're getting ready to move into a season that you're going to work. For yourself. Yeah. God is raising up entrepreneurs. I mean, it's a business venture. This is a season for business venture. All right. You. You. Women 
are going to be comfortable telling you their story. I speak it in Jesus' name. And God's getting ready to plant a vision in your heart. And it shall flourish and it shall come forth. I need somebody to clap your hands and give them
I want you to find somebody beside you. And I know, I know we got cool, we got to keep your mask on, please. Yeah. But I want, I want, I want you to find somebody beside you and look them in the face, look them eyeball to eyeball. I want you, matter of fact, well, I want you, I need everybody standing. I want you to look them in their face. Some of y'all still looking at me. Turn your bodies and look at them. And what I want you to do, some, some of you may not have just one person to look at. So if you got to look at multiple people, that's fine. But what I want you to do is to look at them. And I want you, thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus. I want you to pray for that person. Listen, if you feel comfortable holding hands, that's fine. If, if you feel comfortable holding hands, that's fine. We got plenty of sanitizer out here. We'll get, we'll get it to you. But I want you to pray for them. Come on. Pray for their bodies. Pray for their minds. Hallelujah. Come on. Go ahead and pray for them. Go ahead and pray for them. Come on. Come on. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. Pray for them. Come on. Pray, church.
you got your gift, whatever you're going to give, we ask that you would stand. I see some people on the phones. Amen. Whatever you're giving, we ask that you would uh, uh, give. Uh, let's stand. Let's stand real quick. Amen. Let us stand if you got it. so 
revived. I feel so restored. Uh, God has been so good to us, not just through Genesis, but at his other churches here, Kuku, and it's plenty. But God has been just good to us. And uh, anytime you have the opportunity to be under the spirit and the anointing and God is pouring out like he did today, man, don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted. And it was good. And God has did a, I'm just amazed at, at the words that he spoke and how he hit the nail on the head with so many people. God, God is good. I'm just thankful to you all. New G, you are not, you are uncommon. I'll say that. And don't take that uh, as an insult, but take it as a compliment and that you're different. I remember growing up, uh, I used to say, I would not want to be a first lady. Because I watched some of the things that the first ladies had to go through. And I watched sometimes how the ministry treated them and how I just saw some things. But I, I would have to say that you all are nothing like that. You love me. You celebrate me. Sometimes even more than him sometimes. He look at you for it. But I know what you're doing. You're trying to let me know that you love me just as much as you love him. And I want you to know that I appreciate that. Minister Bailey, that was some strong words. Thank you. Sister Tiffany, thank you for calling me beautiful. I appreciate those words. I appreciate not just today, you all, but everything that y'all have done for us. You make it possible. You make it possible. And so we appreciate you. We thank you. We love you. There, I mean, there's so much I want to say, but just keep watching the rest of this coming up month, and I keep talking about it. Uh, I'm just happy to be amongst my family, my loved ones. My mom showed up today. My dad was supposed to be here. He was feeling a little on the weather. He got scared of the uh, one of our security guards that checked the temperature. He said, that guy with the temperature machine will turn me back. So thank God for my family. My nieces are here. One who has nearly joined us and one is visiting. Y'all wave your hands. Thank God for them. a lot of friends outside the ministry and the churches, but I do have a friend here today. Miss Julia, wave your hand. <laughs> this is her first time visiting, and she has become one of our virtual members, I would say. Amen. You know, God's, God's been so good. During COVID and the pandemic, you know, so many churches shut down. But amazingly, God blossomed us. Like, he gave us a new building. He gave us more, more members. That's amazing. I don't know what you think, but that is amazing. And that's why I say God is doing this and moving in here. He said, I, I believe we're different. We're not, we're not supposed to be like everybody else. So don't take the don't take the, that the wrong way. We are different. I appreciate it. Let your difference be directed by God anointing. Let God anointing move you and what to do and what to say and how to act in the ministry. And God and God will take care of the rest. I appreciate everything. Thank you all, Cooper Chapel. That says a lot about this man. He's still got uh, churches that's coming to support him. So we love y'all. We will always love y'all. We appreciate it. Uh, Pastor, this is your seventh year. When I think about it, I think about Sabbath. I think about rest. For all that hard work you did last year, getting us ready in this place. God is going to give you rest and restoration this year. And then, the pastor told us, even what, what in the next year coming up, God has gotten even more for you. So we look forward to the new, the next, and what he's going to do in, our, in the eighth year. Amen. Amen. You, G, y'all give y'all sense of me. Y'all been good. Y'all have been faithful. Been faithful. To God, most importantly, and that faithfulness has just rubbed off on us. So we appreciate it. We love y'all. We thank y'all. Pastor, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I thank you for listening to God and for giving us the word, for giving us the prophetic speaking and uh, the blessings that you gave our people. We were trying to get out of here to see South Carolina play today at 1 o'clock <laughs> in Oxford. That was my plan, but you know what? You had my daughter. She ain't thought about the game. And other times she would have been at the door. She's back here crying and booing. So we thank you. <laughs> thank you for your word. God, thank you all. We love y'all. We love you. We appreciate everything that you're doing.
But just remember this. God has so much more for you all to do, New G. God has so much more for you to do. So keep loving on your pastor. Keep praying for him. Uh, keep supporting. We appreciate it. Thank you all. Hey, my younger sister, sure. Hey, man. Pastor Bob, let me tell you this. <laughs> now, I know these people say they want to come back. You want, you want to be back. <laughs> so y'all that drove 10 hours, it's your last time. You got 10 hours. I'm telling you now. Man came in here, made me look bad. I sprayed some creed on me in the car, and he done pulled out this. I don't know what it was. And then we pulled up on the church parking lot. He said, Man, I know some of my members from South Carolina. I said, They must love you. And so they came in. Then Sister Michelle got a gift. And I'm still waiting on, I, man, I'm still waiting on the music. It's coming. Yeah. So I don't see nobody. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't see no bad. No, they can't. That ain't never chore. How y'all missed the past? That's all right. Since the show won't be back. Can you hear right now? Yeah. So. But I, I, so, Jazz, are they holding it to, to, to surprise me? They got it? Okay. Right. So, to Mother Kitchen, you have anything from past today? You got it? All right. Uh, Sister Sun, you got anything from past? Always. Always? All right. Hey, don't do this. Quit taking up these people. They didn't get me nothing. Let's tell the truth. They didn't give me nothing. They don't love me like Pastor Bowman's people love me. Um, so, uh, thank you all very much. The shirt like this. Y'all really coming up with some bad excuses. They said the shirt. Pastor, come on back. Come on. Come on back. Amen. Come on back. Y'all look nice in this shirt. Amen. Thank you. Uh, Michael Lazarus. Amen. Pastor, they wanted you to sing another one, but yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Uh, depending on you, somebody text me. <laughs> <laughs> my one more. One more. Uh, one more for the road. I told you yesterday, if you don't, if you don't do what I asked you to do. <laughs> we had this conversation yesterday. What I tell you yesterday? What I said? You're not going to get paid. <laughs> Already made, baby. Amen. 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 I thank you all for having me to your wonderful pastor and first lady. Thank you all so very much for having me. Amen. If you don't remember nothing else I said, please remember that the grass withers, the flower fades, but it is the word of our God which shall stand forever. Amen. I just want to say thank you to uh, Pastor Lashore, Lady Lashore, uh, the entire New G Church. Thank you all for having me. You know, I never take it lightly when people invite me to preach because I do realize that there are preachers on every corner and you could have easily chosen, your pastor knows so many great preachers and you could have easily chosen anybody else. But thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Sir Lee. Thank you, New Gene, uh, for the opportunity to come and share the word, the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, let's stand. We're going to sing a little bit of this song. A little bit of this song.
need everybody to lift your voice and help me say it. Everybody, lift your voice and hit me say, Live your own heart and say, Oh, God.